So now that we've covered management accounting very generally, and now that I've equipped myself with some deliciously potent hazelnut coffee, we can actually go ahead and talk about cost drivers. So cost drivers are very related to costs, and costs are very related to management accounting because, of course, sometimes management accounting is otherwise known as cost accounting. So we're going to start off by talking first about costs and then transitioning into cost drivers. So I'm guessing the most elementary kind of example of a cost that you had in your everyday life as a kid was probably chocolate. Chocolate or chocolate bars. I guess I can put that. I have enough space. Chocolate bars. Okay, so this is one type of cost and the cost driver the cost driver is the activity that drives up the cost. So one cost driver we could come up with is the number of chocolate bars. So we can clearly see here as the, the activity goes up, as the activity or the number of chocolate bars, because cost drivers are the activity that cause the cost to become incurred so as the as the number of chocolate bars increases the, the cost will increase as well so it drives the cost up and that's kind of where they derived that term from to call it cost drivers because the activity drives up the cost and we could have used a different cost driver we could have used a cost driver uh, that fit with a cost as well like like weight in chocolate. But the thing here is, if we used weight in chocolate, uh, let's say that the average chocolate bar is, I don't know, 100 grams. I think that's probably too much, but we'll say it's 100 grams. And let's say that one chocolate bar that was purchased was actually 99 grams, while the other one was 101 grams. So I guess this company hasn't really standardized their process. Well, if we had the, if we had a, I guess you could say the cost of each gram was maybe a cent, and then we multiplied it by the total amount of grams, the cost would be different in each, in each scenario. In the first one, it would be 99 cents, and in the second one, it would be one dollar and a cent. So we would have reported it as that, even though we purchased it for for one dollar each. So even though each chocolate bar was one dollar, our price was off by a penny in both scenarios. So you can see that some cost drivers actually work better than others. And I can give you probably even a better um, example of a less effective cost driver, maybe the number of nuts in the chocolate bar. So maybe uh, if we're purchasing a certain chocolate bar like a Snickers, for example, I'm not sure if there's a standard amount of nuts that go into a Snickers bar, but I'm going to guess uh, there probably is. And let's just say in this scenario that there isn't. So in one in one chocolate bar, maybe there's like 10 nuts, and in the second, there is 15 nuts, and maybe each uh, each each nut can be at a cost of I guess what would what would work here? I guess 10 cents. So in the first scenario, we would have the the right price, but in the second scenario, it would be a dollar fifty, even though we purchased two chocolate bars for a dollar. So as you can see, certain cost drivers can move away from the actual true cost, which is why we need to always try and find the best cost driver to use. And that's actually going to be known as something called the R squared value or the coefficient of determination. And you don't have to worry about it too much at the moment. We're actually going we're actually quite a few tutorials off from this, but this this uh, number will actually indicate 
which cost driver we should probably use in a certain cost function. So for now, just remember that cost drivers are the, are the activity that drive up costs. And we talked about volume related cost drivers and that a greater amount of volume is going to drive up the, the cost. And I guess I can give you a couple quick examples before I leave you. And let's say labor costs, probably the best, the best cost driver for this would be the amount of labor hours. And if you use something like machine hours, obviously that is not as great of a, as, as a cost driver to calculate labor costs. If we had material costs, I'm thinking that the best cost driver would be the, the kilograms of material used. And I guess one final one, maybe research and development. We could say the, the uh, number of products in development will determine our cost in R&D. So as you can see here, there's, there's many different cost drivers you can come up with. However, some are more, are more uh, reflective of the cost than others. So in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about, I think, variable and fixed costs. So I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.